I've been working as a business analyst for six years now in New York City. I've also interviewed at Meta and Apple and have also helped a lot of my friends prepare for their business analyst and data analyst interviews. Today, I wanna break down how I would prepare if I were to do it all over again. First, we're gonna go over core skills and resume tips. Second, we're gonna go over SQL Tech Screen, which tests your data analytics skills. Third, the hiring manager round. Fourth, the very classic case study round in your tech interviews. Last but not least, some bonus of how to actually become a business analyst. In my earlier video and in my online course, I've talked about the three core skills every business analyst and data analyst needs. First is data analysis. This is about answering business questions using data, specifically how you use data to solve problems. Let's say you work at Netflix. Your team wants to know why our users are canceling on their subscriptions at Netflix. Then you pull the data segmented by market, by age group, by device type, by age cohort, etc. and root cause the issue. This is a classic case of what we call the root cause analysis, which in this video, I went in depth on how I will solve this exact question. Second skill is business sense. Essentially, it's about whether you can think like an owner, testing your understanding of the business objectives of the company, such as how the company makes money. So that's why you need to know where we are now, where we're heading, to then figure out how do we get there. Read up on the company's earnings report and also the company's shareholder letter. There is so much tea and insight and strategy that you can extract from and make sure you tailor your interview answer to what's written in that shareholder letter. So let's read it together for Netflix. Here you can see that in the shareholder letter, Netflix is saying in 2025, their priorities are to improve their series and film offering and growing our ads business, furthering developing their newer initiatives like live programming and games and sustaining healthy revenue and profit growth. And here you can also see kind of like a revenue breakdown in their forecast. And here is like the T, right? Like the Q1 result forecast and the content business, the competition, how it's doing. This is so interesting. You can also see like the share of UK TV time. When it comes to competition, you can see Netflix is actually doing much better than YouTube, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime Video. Using our previous example, why do we care if our users at Netflix are canceling on their subscriptions? An answer that showcased your business sense would be something like, I saw that Netflix 2025 priorities are to grow ads, expand into live programming and games, and sustain profitable revenue growth. Third skill is strategic thinking. This is about how you break down open-ended and ambiguous question like, how do we grow users at Netflix? Using the user growth example, you can simply approach it by breaking down the metric. User growth is composed of acquisition of new customers, activation of users who've churned, and retention of the current users. So strategic thinking is about understanding which lever to pull in order to grow the business. My tips in terms of job hunting is I use LinkedIn and don't limit yourself to just search the word business analyst use words like business strategy business ops strategy and operations if you've enjoyed this video so far click the subscribe button below as a way to let me know you like these type of educational content and i will also make more so let me know in the comments what you would like to know next Part two is SQL Tech Screen. If you're interviewing at a tech company, you're most very likely to get a SQL Tech Screen. When I interview as a product specialist at Meta, they required a SQL Tech Screen. So it really depends on the company, but usually once you do your research, you will know it. A SQL Tech Screen is basically a live coding round. You will be given a set of questions. Usually each question is a follow-up of the previous one. So make sure you have a very clear thinking throughout example can be something like how many boxes were sold in 2023 in the US then the second question can be like based on that number can you group it by gender and age group it's really important to focus on your logical thinking and your structural thinking before you even begin coding you can say, so I understand the prompt is blah, blah, blah. I'll filter by year and geography, and then I'll group by gender and age. And this is where the main table I'll query it from. I will also link it with this age and demographic table. You're communicating with the interviewer what you're doing and what goes on in your mind. If let's say you're stuck, you can always say something like, I'm trying to group by age, 
but I need to confirm if date of birth is available in the table. That way I can calculate what the age is. In my meta interview, I was so stuck throughout the interview. I just couldn't get the right query to run, but I was able to walk the interviewer through what exactly was going on in my mind and what issue I was dealing with. Even though I thought I screwed up, I still passed that round. And this leads to me to the sponsor of today's video, DataCamp. When I was preparing for my SQL round, I used DataCamp every day to practice. And I really like how interactive it is. I actually used it when I was still an intern with zero technical knowledge. And DataCamp has helped me learn SQL with no technical experience. The way they teach is step-by-step, -step, super beginner friendly, and it made SQL feel a lot less intimidating. Almost kind of fun, in fact. What I love the most is how realistic the interface is. It literally looks like a real SQL case study live screen. You've got the prompt on the left and a SQL editor on the right. You enter your code, run it, and you can see the results right away. You're not just copying syntax. You're solving problems with real data, just like in an actual interview. They also have a full data analyst SQL career track that walks you through interview style challenges, and it helps you build confidence by actually doing the work. I also went through their Tableau skill track, which teaches you how to turn your analysis into clean, clear visuals, which is a must-have skill for analysts for your data presentations to your stakeholders. And if you want to specialize in analytics, the Data Analyst Certification is an industry-recognized credential, and you can add it to your resume or LinkedIn to stand out in front of recruiters, especially helpful if you're coming from a non-tech background like myself. So if you're preparing for interviews or just starting out your career in data, I highly recommend DataCamp. Check out the links in the description for my custom DataCamp courses and resources that you can find. Step three is your hiring manager round. Usually after you pass the HR round, you pass your SQL tech screen, and it varies in terms of how many rounds it is and the format of it. It can be one-on-one -on -one with your hiring manager. It can be one versus a panel or multiple rounds of one-on-one -on -one with different team members. So in terms of what you can expect in your interview with your hiring manager, I would say there are two buckets of questions. Bucket one is more on the technical skill side based on the three core skills I talked about in part one. So make sure you have stories for those skills. Then the second bucket is more on the soft skills. These are more linked to the behaviors. In terms of how you can prepare, definitely read up on the company's core values. That shows you what key behaviors are very important for the company. And in terms of how you can structure an answer, my recommendation is always in three parts. Part one is what was the goal that you were trying to achieve? Part two is what were the constraints? What were the pain points? What was the issue? Three is what did you do? The reason why I always state the goal is that you want to make sure you come off like a business analyst. You are staying very goal oriented. My overall tip with these type of one-on-one -on -one conversation and interview is to kind of approach it like a discussion. At the end of the day, this is not about having a perfect answer, but more so it gives people a sense of who you are, how you think, how you articulate yourself. Step four is the case study round, which is usually for me the hardest part and the most complex and time consuming part. This round essentially tests how you break down an ambiguous business question. The interviewer will give you a set of data, usually that thousands of rows of raw data and will give you a prompt and give you anywhere from two days to a week to prepare for a business presentation. Usually they will limit to like six to 10 pages and you will present to a panelist that consists either from your team members or relevant teams so people can get a fair assessment of you. So simple case study can be like, you know, this data set contains customer data from 2023 to 2025 and Netflix. You can identify opportunities and advice on how you grow users. It, usually it will be tied to a specific goal or a specific metrics. My tip is to one, not jump into solutions, read the shareholders letter. First, I'll really get clear on what is the goal of doing this case study. I'll ask myself, why is this important? How is growing users important for the business? And I can link it based on what it's written in the earnings call or in the shareholders letter. So first is I wanna know what are our current users right now? And specifically breaking down by market level, by age group level, by device type, 
by content type. That way it gives me a sense of where to focus my energy on and the types of opportunities and potential insights I can extract in each different levers. Let's say I pull the data, so what's the insight? What patterns, what data patterns and trends are we seeing? And the question I ask myself is, okay, what's the so what, right? And this I cover it all in my case study if you want it more in depth with real raw data that you can work with. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Bonus tip on how to actually become a business analyst this is probably one of the most popular questions I get asked from you guys. So two parts. Part one, if you're a student, I highly, highly recommend trying looking for internships during your studies. Functions in data, insights, even startups, consulting, those are the places and functions where you get really get to learn how to break things down structurally with a system, with a framework, but also using data to solve problems. Obviously, if you're aiming for tech in the long term, look for app-based companies because that's where you will get millions if not billions of data. If you already have a full-time job right now but you want to pivot or transition into business analyst roles, don't quit your job or rush. I think the first thing is start by learning how your company operates. Imagine yourself like a business analyst right now at your current company. Try to understand how other functions are reaching the company's goals. Start analyzing your company, have cross-functional conversations, know how their projects are helping the company grow. Get in the habit of reading company's earnings report, tuning into their earnings call. You might find a lot of surprises along the way of preparing yourself for a pivot. To summarize, each round of the interview tests something different, but if you prepare with structure and if you approach it with a growth mindset, with a curious mindset, I'm sure you will be fine. And even if you don't get the role, remember that it all becomes part of your experiences. It becomes yours and no one can ever take it away from you so and when the right time comes when the right opportunity comes you will be ready just the way you are and by the way if you want to sharpen your data skills check out data cam the links in the description so thank you so much for watching this video and let me know what other top topics and deep dives you want to hear more about in the comments thank you bye